Hello and welcome to the first tutorial in this series. This is going to be an introduction into how to use OpenStreetMap. First of all, you go to the website, which is openstreetmap.org, and then you log in. If you don't have a login yet, you click on sign up. And it's like on every other page where you have to uh, make an account. And when you've done that, they send you an email to verify and then you can log in. You can also log in with other accounts, as you can d see down here. But I have an OpenStreetMap account, so I'm going to log in with that. And you can use the same OpenStreetMap account for other purposes later on that we will cover in, in later videos. So Bell and Gary here, if I zoom in, I usually use the wheel on my mouse, but I think you can also use the plus button on your keyboard if you're more familiar with that. You see there's already a church mapped here and a couple of buildings, two bus stops. Um, these are very likely pubs because there's bus stops outside and because this brown button, when we zoom in, will turn into a pint glass, which is the symbol for pub. But we are not going to work on the village. We're going to work on the church. And then down here is Ballengarry House, this one. But you can see there's no name on it yet. We'll change that. So I zoom in on, on the church so I won't forget wh where it is later. And click the edit button. And this opens the ID editor. So this tutorial is only about the ID editor, which is very good for beginners. There's also Potlatch, which I've never used, I think, and Josm, which is really good when, when you're doing buildings, but um, that's for a later point in time. So if that closes again. So we have Bing is our background satellite imagery. Uh, they updated their imagery in December 2020. And you can see it doesn't align to what's already been mapped. Like you can see the road underneath where the road has been mapped. Um, but I will cover that in a different video. So up here you see you have point, line, area. I'm just going to do some examples and not save them. So a point, when you click on point, it will result in something like this. And then you can get a choice of things that this could be. Uh, which is only a very small choice and you get point and when you click on that you can put in different other keys and values um, more about keys and values in a minute so i'll delete this now because we don't need it a line is you know it's a collection of connected points and we don't use that now so i delete it and area is again it's a collection of points that makes up the area what we're going to do first is you can see there's a church here and there's a graveyard around it but the graveyard isn't mapped but some genealogists or some tourists from america looking for their ancestors from belangari might want to know where the graveyard is in belangari so if you put it on the map you will have helped them so we will leave this window and open a new window with the OpenStreetMap wiki, which explains all the keys and values that we can use. So we're on the wiki now. It's wiki.openstreetmap.org. And it's just like Wikipedia, only this one specializes in OpenStreetMap. So we want to add a graveyard, but we don't yet know how to do that, what the keys and values are. So we type in graveyard. And it's only a graveyard because it's there is a church at attached to it. If it's not, if it's a freestanding or separate place where people are buried, it's a cemetery, just to make that clear. I did not know that until I started mapping. So here we learn that we use amenity equals graveyard. The first thing is the key. So it's an amenity. There are loads of different amenities. Um, for example, a pharmacy would be an amenity or a pub would be an amenity and other things as well. 
about this one. So the key is amenity, the value is graveyard. So that's how it's done, grave underscore yard. And then it explains there's a definition to mark places where people or sometimes animals are buried, which is close to a amenity place of worship. So of course in Ireland, we presume that all the historical graveyards are Christian. That's why it doesn't say amenity church or something like that, because you could be mapping in, in a different cultural environment where there might be a Jewish graveyard or a synagogue attached or, or um, a mosque. So that's why it's called place of worship. And then uh, the, the, the next level of tagging would be to define the religion. It expla explains the usage then. So we see that land use cemetery is used, as I said, for something that's separate from a place of worship. And then you can add religion and denomination, which we might do. And then um, depending on how it is rendered, how it is defined as Christian, Jewish or Muslim, it has the little symbols for these religion uh, once it's on the map. Okay, so now we know how to do it. Amenity graveyard and then the religion and maybe the denomination. So we're, we are back in the ID editor and the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to change the satellite imagery to Esri world imagery because it is a bit clearer and also because it is more aligned to the map usually. And then you choose it on the right and then you close that window. It is sharper imagery. So you see and also see that the road is covers the actual road better. So we have the church here, can zoom in a little bit more, not too much. Yep. And I click on the area tool and I start drawing, let's say over here. And you can see there is a wall there, which we can also map in a minute. So just follow the outline of the graveyard, follow the hedge and the wall. And down here, I'm going to show you how not to do it. If I get too close to the road, it will connect the road and the graveyard outline, which we don't want. So I'm pressing Control Z to undo. Or you can also press the undo button at the top there. And to avoid that, you can either zoom in more and to get it more precise, or you press your Alt key and that will result in them not connecting. And then you can let go of the Alt key again and follow the wall. Oh, I lost it there. So now we have this area. And actually, no, the, the point is the node is highlighted. As you can see, it's blinking there. We don't want that. We want the whole area. So I'm clicking on the line and you see now that the whole line is, hi is highlighted. And now it's already uh, defined as an area, which we don't really need, but I'll just leave it. And as we have learned earlier, and it's also still there at the top, amenity. And usually it auto completes the word, which is handy if you're, you know, prone to a misspelling or something or lazy amenity equals and you don't put the equals in. That's just um, how they display it in the wiki. You just fill in the table, basically grave yard. And again, it auto completes. Okay. And now if we scroll up, you see that it asks for the religion and, and that would be Christian. And that's all we're going to do for now with this area. We can delete area equals yes. And it has no effect because a graveyard is already predefined as an area. So we have the graveyard now. The church didn't have a name on it. So we're got just uh, going to call it, there is no name tag. So uh, down here in the table, I'll just add name, Valin Gary graveyard, because if people are looking for it on OpenStreetMap, they have to type in a name. 
and this is this might not be the official name but it's the best we can do for now because I'm not from there I don't know and when once you have filled that in you see that the name is displayed now what we can also do uh, if you're not from the area but I presume that if you're doing all this work you are from the area and you know all the names is that you can go over to the background layer again and scroll down until you come to Ireland British War Office 1 to 25k and so on and you click on that and you see it is a historical map from the 1940s well you can't see that it's the 1940s I'm telling you that and but it also only says church and graveyard so there's no saint whoever attached to it so we're just gonna leave it like that Bell and Gary graveyard is the best bit and now we can save this added graveyard sources this is where you put in the imagery that you used so Esri if you used Bing or something else you put that in if you used actually use the British uh, War Office map for any information you can put that in as well but there wasn't anything there if you have done a survey and you, that's where you got your information you put in survey if you live there you can put in local knowledge I'll just do that now you see if you type in LO it'll LO it'll auto complete it to local knowledge but I'm not from there so I don't have the local knowledge so that doesn't apply to me if you have a hashtag for it for example if you're having a project in your historical society and let's call it graveyard projects bell and gary historical society that's a very long hashtag but you could put something like that in you just have to start with the hashtag sign i am not doing that now i mean no so i will just hit upload And it is now saved and if I click on the logo on the top left corner we come to the map that we saw before and you see no changes so if you hit refresh which is the F5 button on your keyboard or the little refresh button at the top there then it will refresh the page because the the old content is still in the cache so control F5 is a refresh and sometimes you have to hit it a couple of times because a lot of people might be mapping um, might be a lot of traffic again that didn't work so we'll try again and there we go there it is I'll zoom in a bit and you might have to refresh for every zoom level unfortunately but there we go we have the graveyard now so that was our first step learning how to do an area in a second step we will learn how to draw a line and we will draw a wall as you could see before we did the area of the graveyard there was a wall or there is a wall around the graveyard which we will draw now uh, first of course we will look up how to do a wall so we go to the wiki again and we type in wall and there we see the key is barrier and the value is wall you don't need to read the definition of a wall I think I think most of us know what a wall is it's just maybe interesting to see that there is a city wall which also applies to town walls um, if you want to do that at some point with your historical society because it's a special wall and it will dis be displayed different uh, than to a normal wall uh, how to map create a line and then add the tag barrier wall additional tags height width material color which I can't do in from the satellite view but you can do that if, if you have the opportunity to actually measure the things like that and then you can add that so that's really all for now there you can go down and see at different types of walls like dry stone for example would be a special type of a wall 
Um, if you have those in your area in the west of Ireland, I think they're quite common. You can use that straight away. But if you're not sure, then just use Barrier Wall, which is the basic tag for this. So we're back in Ballangarry and I leave that open up there so I know um, how to do it. I mean, I know it anyway, but to remind you, maybe go in Edit. And you might be able to see that it rem remembers that we had chosen the Esri imagery, which is great because we don't want to go to the Bing imagery. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and choose the line tool up here. You see, there are also shortcuts. I never use those. Some people are mad for shortcuts. I do it for, for some things, but not for this. Okay, so we have a driveway leading in here. So obviously there's no wall across the driveway, uh, logically. And also we could see that earlier. You can also do the wall first and then add the area. That's totally up to you. So I'm starting in this corner here. And I'm just continuing along the edge of the area. Which you don't have to do, but in this case, it makes sense because the wall is the exact boundary for the graveyard. And if you zoom in here, you see that there is, it looks like a hedge, but I would presume, would presume that it's actually a wall going all around and that it's just overgrown. Someone might have a different opinion or do a survey and find out that it's actually not a wall, but a hedge um, around and they can go in and change that then. So you see, I lost the connection to the line tool now for some reason, but that, not to worry. You just click on the last point on your line and there's a plus button that says continue, continue this line. So that's what I'm doing. Slowly, carefully following this around. And I think there's a bit more wall down here. Yeah, I'll end it on this node. And now I have this still attached to my tool, which I don't want. So I hit the escape button on the keyboard, the escape key. Now we have this line highlighted. And because I lost the node up here or the tool, um, it will show me line and then I can fill everything in. But there are some predefined things in the menu. If you go on the arrow left button, you see that because it's a line and has predefined, it could be a road, it could be rails, it could be a path, a waterway, and so on. And as we know now, a wall is defined as a barrier, so we click on barrier features. And again, it opens a little sub-menu and you can get a fence, a wall, a trench, a gate, a hedge, a curb, so on. So we choose wall and you see it turns into this dotted line. And then it gives you more options, type, height, material, which I don't know. I presume it's made of stone, but it's not really that important for the moment. So that's what we need for now. Just as a bonus, we can do the driveway, for example, which is not a historical feature, but it might help people to find their way into the graveyard alive. So we start, let's say we start up here. We use the line tool again. And I will presume it's a driveway. It could also be a path, but it looks, if you zoom in here, it looks like cars have been driven on this. And also for a funeral, the hearse might go in that way. It really depends on your graveyard, you know best. So uh, we use the line tool and draw a line along this road and then connect it to the minor unclassified road. And again, hit the escape key. And now because it's defined as a line, it gives us the same options. And you can see that wall is still up here because the last five, I think the last five items you used will always be up here, which is great if you're doing a lot of farmland or a lot of walls, you don't have to go in, scroll down to barrier features and click on wall, for example. 
So this is um, a minor road. You should really look this up now, but I'm just going to tell you. Minor road, and you scroll down, you come to service road. And then you get a type. You see it changed its appearance. The type is a driveway. And it changed its, its appearance again a little bit, got a bit slimmer. And that's all we need to know for now. We could add the surface, but again, that's not a historical feature or anything like that. So you don't have to do that. And now we save this. So we added a wall and driveway at the sources, Esri. And when you look down here, you see there is a box you can tick. I would like someone to review my edits. So if you're a newbie to OpenStreetMap and you want someone to check what you've done and maybe give you some feedback, you click this before you hit the upload button and then someone in the community who is more experienced will look at your changes or change set is what it is usually called. And then you will get a message in your inbox, which is up here. My messages. Uh, you will be sent an email because when you sign up, you have to give an email address. That's one of the reasons uh, that someone can contact you and say, listen, you did, you know, the wall you did there was very out of line or something like that, or you tagged it wrong. And um, usually people are friendly enough. And then you can go and change that because they might not know. There might be a reason that they don't know about why you did something a certain way. Or you might have just made an honest mistake and you can go in and change that then and learn from your mistakes. So this is the box you tick. I would like someone to review my edits and then hit upload. And once it is finished saving, you see that before it always shows how many changes you have done in the top right corner, but it's all um, gray now and it shows a zero. So that means you're finished saving and it's safe enough to click on the OpenStreetMap logo to go to the main page. And like before, it doesn't show the changes right away. So you can go and get yourself a cup of tea or press the Control F5 key and hope for the best. Yeah, could have gotten a cup of tea. So you can see the driveway here and very faintly you can see the wall. If you zoom in, you might be able to see it a bit better. So there's a dark, so you can see it here where the driveway goes into the graveyard. There is no gray line because we didn't continue the wall down there. So you see the gray line around the graveyard and that's that. And the last thing we will learn is how to add a node. There is nothing really historically interesting in the graveyard except for maybe gravestones. If there's some famous person buried, you could add the, the gravestone using a node or the headstone. But I don't think that there is anyone there. And also, I will show you something different. So we go down here. This farm here is Ballingarry House, which I saw on the British War Office map. And there is a castle in one of the fields, which you can see is not mapped. So what again we will do first is look up how to tag a castle. So on the wiki, we type in castle and hit the search button. And you see the key is historic and the value is castle. And it also says there are different castle types. I'll click on that to see what happens. So defensive, palace, stately, manor, Fortress Castrum, Shiro, something in Japan, Kremlin in Russia, Hillfort, don't think that applies, Fortified Church. And then there's also user defined. I often, when I see a tower house or I know it's a tower house, I will add castle type tower house because it's a very typical Irish thing, I think. And it would be interesting to 
have a map of all the tower houses at some point. How to map, it says use a node at the center point or draw an area covering the outline tag with historic castle and so on. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but it says the outline should include all still existing features, for example, the moat and so on. So that's what we're going to use building castle and also if it is in a ruined state can use building ruins for example because then it will be displayed as a building uh, meaning it will have an outline if you only mark the the point the center point uh, it will be displayed different so we will use historic equals castle and building equals ruins so, as I said, this is Bellingary House, and it's somewhere here. So I hit the edit button. So you see the farm there, and I think it's this little thing here. So it must be a ruin which is overgrown. But just to make sure, I'm going to use the British War Office layer again on the right hand side. And once it, you can close that window. So it seems to refer to this blob here. And you see there's also a walled garden or something. And you also get the name Ballangaria House in that information. We might do that first. Shouldn't shouldn't stray from the routine, but I might forget it. Ben and Gary House under name. And then I'm also going to add source colon name British War Office map just to make sure that everybody knows that where I got this information from. You shouldn't draw over anything um, that is on this map because you see the alignment is off and it might not be matching the satellite view to start with. So you can you can switch in between the two maps views, so the, the British War Office map and the whatever else you have chosen. In our case, Esri World Imagery. So as we read, we should use node. If it wasn't so overgrown, if you could see an outline, you could use area. So we place the node there and it suggests a couple of things like before with the lines and the area, a couple of natural features, what it could be, it's none of those. Spoiler alert, you won't find it in the lists, park and so on. So we go to the bottom, which says point and then go into tags and put in historic castle. Again, CAS will already suggest castle probably. And we leave it at that for now. Uh, you could, for example, add the wall to this, well, where you can still see it. So there, there, there maybe, I'm not sure if there's anything left. So we just added the castle. You could add, there wasn't a name in the British War Office map, but it's in Ballingarry, Ballingarry Castle, and then maybe in Ruins. And we should state it's a ruin. We will do that in the next step, just to show if, to check if there's any difference in the rendering. So we hit save. Added castle sources is re and also British War Office. Unfortunately, there is no autocomplete there. War War Office map.
And I've saved it and gone to the main page again with the map. And again, it's not being displayed, so I have to hit Control F5 again. So it is displaying the little castle icon and the name Belangari Castle in Ruins, the same stuff we typed in. It does not display the name of the house for some reason. And now it does. And we will always put the name in the center of the building. Okay. And now we will see if it changes anything in the rendering if we add ruins as a key. It probably won't, but it's important to do it anyway. And you might wonder why would we add that key if we put it in the name. It has something to do with it being searchable by its key. If you're looking for all the ruined castles, for example. So building. So I just typed B-U-I-L and it auto completes it to building and then ruins. And you can also, once you've put in castle, if you go up here, uh, type um, would be defensive. So you see, um, you get a couple of choices there. But you could, should always look up first how to do it properly. And then historic civilization, prehistoric, Neolithic, ancestral, Puebloan, you won't find that in Ireland, so medieval gonna add that if you know the access please put that in as well and the start date you won't get it down to the day i guess but you can also just put in 1400 i think that works as well if it's an opw castle for example you can add operator operator and then office of public works or opw but i won't do that now because i don't know that's just an option you have. And then we save. There's really no source for this because that's just how it should be done. And we go to the home page again. It doesn't seem to change anything in the display. It would change if it was an outline, but we might come to that at some other point. I couldn't look around for a castle. You know, it's very difficult to find one um, that uh, or an area that we could map that has all the things I wanted to use. And just to show you um, that it is a database and not just a map, we'll zoom out. And hopefully, when we type in Ballingary House and hit go, Ballingary House, Ballingary, you see it already jumps to that. So people can find this now. And we'll zoom out again. I'll zoom in again because I was too fast. So you see the results on the left hand side and there might be more than one Belangari house because there's more than one Belangari in Ireland. But you see when you click on it then, on the search result, the one that you've just done, you might have to scroll a bit. You see all the tags we had to put in. Uh, building house was already done. Name Belangari house, that's what we put in and source name British War Office map. Um, if there is a Wikipedia article about this house, because it might be a manor house, somebody important might have lived there, it might have played an important part in history. If there is a Wikipedia page, you can also link that. That will be a different tutorial at some later point. And I'll zoom out again. And type in Ballingary Castle. Should be more than one. 
So we have Ballangari Castle Municipal District of Nina, that's the one we just added, and there's also the one in uh, the Municipal District of Carrick on Shore, that's one I added ages ago, I think. So, and you click on it. If you just hover with your mouse over the search result, it'll show you where it is. And sometimes, if you're not sure which one you're looking for, which Ballangari, but you have a vague idea where it should be, you zoom out or it might show you this uh, view anyway when you get the whole uh, list of results so this is the one we just added if i hover over this one here it shows us the one in carrick on shore and if i hit more results there's even another another one which is farren rory castle in Ballangary. So it, it combines the search for Castle and Berengary because somebody might not actually know the name or might know it as Berengary Castle when it's actually Farron Rory Castle. They're very close together because they're probably both near Berengary. And that is that already. And I hope you learned a bit. And for homework, um, so you can practice, I would suggest for notes, that you add power poles, which are not super historic, but the rural electrification of Ireland is. Hooray, William Rowe. So you look up how to tag power poles on the wiki and then you just, you'll find them. We'll go back in here. I'll show you how to recognize them. They are very small and you use a node and I'm sure we'll find one or two. And for lines, I would suggest you add a few hedges because you'll always find those. Um, it's not built heritage, but it's still part of heritage. And if you have an interest in them, you can also add the species, which you will find when you look up hedges on the wiki. And for the area tag, uh, you can add farmland. You can look it up first. Or if you have a graveyard in your area that isn't mapped, add another graveyard, which would be more useful. So we're looking for power poles, which are usually along streets or in a field. And you recognize them by their shadow. Of course, Murphy's Law, I'm not sure this might be one there. Examples aren't great because it depends on the the time of day the pictures were taken. This is one that's very clear. Um, the by the shadow you can really recognize them by their shadow, but here you can actually see the power line as well. So you see here in the middle of the field is one. I won't do it now because I don't want to spoil the surprise. Um, I'll show you how, where to put the note. It's there because you see that the cows have walked around and there is not much growing there. So that's where the where it starts, where it hits the ground, so to speak. So that's where you put the node, not at the top of it. And there's another one down here. Where, and you can see that the power line continues somewhere here. There might be one there as well. And then there's another one. Just add a couple of them using the correct tag and you can also add the power line if you want to use that for practice it's not historical you know it's not as exciting maybe for some people as a wall is but then you know people are different and i won't save that i don't have to because i've deleted it already and uh, if you want to let me know in the comments how you got on with your homework then let do that and also what I meant to say and now if I forgot it I have to go in again yeah I'll just add one of the walls there is more wall up here so I'm adding that because it's more easily visible so like we did before use the line tool
and add the wall. I would always leave that gap open and it still has the wall up here. Remember how we did the service road earlier? So it still remembers that and the wall because we did a wall earlier. So I add this one and this bit. And that's a bit crooked. If I want to move this, you hit, you mark it so it's, it's highlighted and does the red blinking. And then you hit the M key on your keyboard, which stands for move. And then you can move the whole feature around. You can do that with anything. You can do it with the whole building. So if you want to make that a nice line, then do that. Also, what you can do is rotate. If for some reason you have something you need to rotate, a building or something. Again, I'll unselect it, deselect it, and then select it again. Of course, it doesn't make sense for nodes, just for lines and areas. So you hit the R for rotate button. And then you just, you don't have to press any key on your mouse. You just, it'll follow your mouse around. And I'll just leave it turned 180 degrees because it doesn't make a difference for this one. So M for move, R for rotate. And other key shortcuts, I said before I don't use them, but I do use them. I just don't use the ones up here for one, two, three. Save this. Added walls and sources Esri. And then hit the upload button. And thank you for watching. I think we did a huge difference in Bellingary from a historical viewpoint and great impact. And thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in the next tutorial.